Okay, yes, yes. So let's uh, get started and hopefully people can walk in. You can uh, get uh, people who are enjoying coffee to tell them what they are uh, uh, about to uh, miss uh, the start uh, here. So, and uh, why uh, we're uh, walking in, I uh, wanted to start is I usually like to include some uh, slide about what we have uh, done in your wonderful country, wonderful uh, city before event, but uh, this time I personally just fly in very late yesterday. But uh, just last month we have uh, a fantastic engineering meeting uh, in uh, Antalya and uh, enjoyed some uh, fun activity and I thought I will share one of those uh, uh, one of those pictures. Well, as people are still uh, walking in, uh, I had some questions for uh, you to get started. So first one is, uh, what is uh, your role? Just want to understand here. Uh, now, who is here a DBA? Any DBAs here? Oh, wonderful. Uh, who is m uh, maybe developer? Developers, okay. What about sysadmins? Okay. What about managers? Anybody in management here? Okay, uh, cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, some people are in management. And I wonder how far uh, did you travel? So I uh, assume many of you folks here are from uh, Istanbul and surroundings, right? Anybody else? Uh, any uh, other uh, cities? Yeah. What is, what is it? Ankara. Oh, from Ankara, that's nice. Anybody uh, not from Turkey, from other countries? Okay, yes, yeah, so uh, some of our esteemed speakers came from uh, other countries. But that's cool, that's good, good, good to see. Some of you have uh, traveled here. Uh, and uh, what about the databases uh, you run? This is uh, very much focused uh, on uh, event, focused on databases. Anybody here runs Postgres? Okay, what about MySQL? Okay, uh, what about MongoDB? A few hands. Okay, what is about evil property databases like Oracle? Okay, okay, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but welcome anyway. We are not going to talk uh, about uh, Oracle here today. What about programming languages? So, yes, what is a... Yes, I see you are already raising hands. All of them? All of them. All of them. Wow. You, yourself, all of them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Smart dude. Uh, so what about Java? Anybody likes Java here? Okay. Golang? Yes. And what about my favorite language, BrainFuck? Anybody develops in BrainFuck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and look, Google, that is actually a real programming language, not just something which uh, roll off my tongue. Okay. And uh, do you run any Percona stuff? Anybody? Okay. Fair amount of hands. For others, I hope you will uh, uh, discover some things Percona has to offer through this uh, presentation. And maybe, uh, you know, f after the event, a few, few more. Uh, we'll uh, do that. So, a few words about our uh, agenda here. So, we'll have a full day of talks uh, so from uh, 10 o'clock to uh, 6 uh, in the afternoon. We'll have uh, lunch provided, a couple of coffee, uh, coffee breaks, uh, right? Uh, uh, and uh, we'll have a, a raffle or lottery after. Right, so if you guys uh, find some of the first presentation uh, interesting, well, you are free to let uh, your friends know if they want to uh, still join in. We welcome everyone as long as we have uh, uh, space. Uh, and uh, uh, what else? Yeah, in, in the end, we'll have a, a lottery or raffle. If you want to participate in that, you can talk to uh, the lady which is sitting in front, right, and put your name in a, uh, a raffle box. I also wanted to say thanks to our uh, sponsors, right, who uh, helped to financially support this uh, 
uh, event, and it is uh, uh, FerriDB, the company which uh, builds uh, uh, open source uh, replacement for uh, MongoDB, and uh, uh, hosted PMM, the company which uh, makes Tricona monitoring and monitoring management uh, easier to use through SaaS uh, hosting. And you can see we've hosted PMM, they spent all their budget on sponsoring this event so they didn't have any money left for logo. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, with that, we will uh, move to talk uh, a bit about their uh, open source databases and innovation which is happening uh, in this space through uh, last uh, few years. Right. So what I have been observing recently was we have a lot more focus going on, uh, on the distributed databases recently. Right? And we can see that uh, very well on a database which are being built uh, right now, not something which was uh, you know, created uh, 20, 20 years ago. Not only in open source, but even in proprietary database, if you think about uh, those databases of the past, you know, think Oracle, SQL Server, right, or uh, MySQL, Postgres, they're all were designed with kind of a single main server in mind, right, and with maybe some, yeah, some sort of form of uh, replication. Where if you look at uh, of a newer generation technologies, right, you think about, uh, you know, Cassandra, right, or even, uh, uh, technologies like Yugabyte, CockroachDB, right? They are all designed with uh, uh, thinking about the cluster, right? And many nodes uh, to start, because obviously you figure out if you're really running the medium and large scale applications, you can't really fit them in one box, right? Even very uh, beefy box. The second trend, which is interesting, and that is something which uh, started mostly on analytical databases, but uh, increasingly comes to their uh, uh, operational database as well is uh, uh, separation of storage and compute, right? Uh, especially uh, that pattern uh, is uh, well used uh, in the cloud where we are uh, looking at how we can uh, scale, right, our c compute uh, capacity separately from, uh, from our storage. And that gives a lot of, uh, you know, uh, architectural flexibility and so on and so forth. As if everything, right, it has some, uh, some trade-offs, but that is, I think, is a very uh, interesting pattern which uh, some of the databases are pursued now. And that is a pattern which, among other, makes it very convenient to uh, develop a serverless solution, right, especially uh, multi-tenant serverless uh, databases because uh, uh, if your uh, storage and compute are uh, separated, then that uh, makes it very easy not to kind of run anything, uh, right, then uh, if, uh, you know, tenant doesn't use the database uh, at, uh, uh, at this point. Right. Well, of course, when I talk about serverless, it's kind of a little bit of uh, misnomer, of course, right? In the end, of course, there are still servers on which uh, our database run, but the point of the serverless when it applies to the databases is what you are not really deploying and managing it in the concept of nodes, right? But you are typically configuring some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, parameters, uh, right, maybe in terms of performance you need, right, or maybe you are charged uh, or based on consumptions, how many queries you run and how complicated uh, they are. Here is some of the newer uh, open source uh, uh, technologies to uh, mention. Uh, one uh, uh, is uh, Neon, which is quite uh, interesting. Uh, the, uh, the company which is building the open source database based on uh, Postgres which uses many of those uh, patterns, like right? separation, storage, and compute, right? We're uh, looking to provide that in the cloud through a serverless uh, mode and so on and so forth, right? Another database I would mention, which is even early stage startup, which is uh, Tigris, and uh, beyond uh, all this uh, serverless uh, and you know separation, storage, and compute, and so on and so forth, and other problem they focus on is uh, uh, really making uh, 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 database uh, zero, zero ops, 
right? Making sure what you, uh, as a developer, do not need to uh, really think about uh, operating your databases to a point of saying, hey, you know what we want? Require developers to create the indexes, right? Which is often one of the big problems, right? Developers don't create indexes, and that makes database performance very, very bad, right? But just have some technology which uh, uh, indexes data uh, after magically. Another uh, change which we see uh, uh, over recent years is what uh, uh, their multiple data models, right, and interfaces which are being supported. So if you think about something like uh, 10, 15 years ago, relational databases, that was uh, pretty much uh, it. Yes, maybe, you know, like a 20 years ago plus, there have been, you know, object databases, right, or XML databases, but you know what? We didn't get uh, any real traction, right? Uh, now, we see a huge explosion of a data model, and beyond relational, we have uh, document databases, we have uh, uh, key value stores, time series, graph databases, we have such technologies like Redis, which provide us a variety of their, uh, data structures, right? There is a lot uh, those days to uh, uh, to choose, right? Which creates an interesting uh, dilemma because on uh, one side we have this uh, amazing choice where we don't have to uh, try to fit the square bolt in a round hole, <laughs> uh, right? We're trying to use like relational for everything, even if it doesn't fit very well. On the other hand, of course, we may have huge uh, about the uh, uh, amount of database used with uh, uh, developers may have a related, well, and other like stuff in a company which may have relatively little uh, understanding is how all that database works, right? Because the databases are pretty complicated beasts. And if distributed database, especially they're getting more complicated, right, while uh, uh, or often teams have a less experience, less depth, right, because we use uh, so many of them. With that, you also see uh, some databases uh, evolve uh, to support multiple data models or even talk uh, different uh, programming languages, uh, or, well, the inter different languages, right, in interface and, uh, uh, and protocols, like... Uh, uh, for example, you would uh, find what many relational databases we have uh, uh, been increasingly getting JSON support, right, to support uh, kind of document uh, application. Some of them uh, even have uh, uh, additional interfaces for that, uh, like uh, 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 MySQL has a doc store interface, right, then uh, their uh, PostgreSQL does not kind of natively have uh, something, but there is a whole bunch of extension which allows you to use PostgreSQL with non-SQL uh, uh, languages, but uh, uh, some others. You also have like an interesting trend with some of their newer databases choosing to support not one, but several uh, different uh, uh, protocols. Uh, right, right uh, or uh, interfaces you can use. Like, for example, ClickHouse analytical database, right? It has support for native ClickHouse protocol, but as well as you can connect to it using your MySQL or PostgreSQL, uh, PostgreSQL connector, which eliminates some of that uh, friction from your application where you don't need to, uh, uh, you know, do a, a lot of... Uh, 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 yeah, support. Uh, uh, you don't need a lot of uh, modifying your application for, uh, well, installing connector for that particular protocol. Or uh, Victoria Metric is another example which we have support for multiple uh, time series uh, uh, APIs, right? Be besides native uh, Prometheus protocol, you can ingest the data from InfluxDB or Graphite uh, API. Uh, you know, FerroDB. Uh, our sponsors here, right, they allow you to use uh, MongoDB uh, protocol with uh, PostgreSQL uh, 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 as a backend. Uh, and another technology I want to mention is this uh, uh, Babelfish, which uh, is uh, something what uh, uh, AWS created, which 
uh, is extensions for Postgres, which allows PostgreSQL to speak Microsoft SQL Server uh, protocol, right? So a lot of uh, that uh, integration uh, going on. I would also say what uh, 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 you will find what many NoSQL technologies, right, or what's there in that NoSQL camp, they are also uh, increasingly getting SQL or SQL compatible language as support, right? You can find, uh, uh, to, for example, Elasticsearch, right? They have, uh, you know, in, uh, SQL interface uh, built, right, over the last few years, or uh, uh, even technologies like Cassandra gives you uh, what they call CQL, uh, right, which is something which, uh, you know, inspired by SQL, uh, look like SQL in many cases, while it's not uh, fully compatible, right? So we can also see what as technologies mature, they like to leverage that kind of uh, uh, the ubiquitousness of uh, SQL and so many people uh, which know it. Okay, that is uh, uh, what the biggest trends, I would say, which come to the technology side of uh, open source uh, uh, databases. Let us talk about the open source side too. So in your opinion, what is the biggest factor which uh, impacts open source right now? Any thoughts? Last few years, yeah, come on. Cost. What? Cost. Cost, okay, what else? Scalability. Huh? Scalability. Scalability. Okay, any other? Yeah. What's that? Community support. Hmm. Okay. License changes. Oh, okay. Well, so what I had, which no one uh, of you uh, mentioned yet, and that's maybe my question. Come on, Sveli. You, of course, no answer for everything. We don't even ask you. <laughs> uh, it is uh, a cloud, right? Like, that is something which, uh, uh, if you look at the last, you know, 10 years, especially last five years, something which was uh, uh, impacting uh, open source a lot. Right in terms of, uh, especially I would say their uh, businesses uh, around open source, right? And that is important because uh, if you look at uh, open source, right there in uh, 90s, you would find a lot of open source was kind of in this uh, romantic era where a lot of people from academia, volunteers, and so on and so forth would be developing open source projects, uh, right there. Now is uh, majority of open source development is uh, uh, really done, well, well, as a paid job, right? So th that is uh, also mean that is, uh, uh, have to be, you know, funded by, uh, uh, by some companies, right? So uh, uh, the question about how those companies uh, make money <laughs> in the end becomes quite, mm, uh, quite important. So cloud impact, right? Now, uh, what was uh, interesting for me to see is, um, do you guys, uh, many of you know this uh, DB engines? Anybody knows that kind of resource? Well, the DB engines is something which ranks the popularity of the databases, right? And they use uh, like some, you know, or like a methodology looking at, you know, jobs uh, around those technologies and so on and so forth, right? And they measure what the, data, uh, what the database uh, was the most uh, trending in a given year. And for last like five years or so, that was open source databases, right? That would be, uh, you know, so one or other open source database in 2020, that was, uh, you know, Postgres. But now in uh, 2021, that was Snowflake, like, by him. That is a very much like a proprietary cloud, uh, uh, cloud database, right? Which is, uh, is uh, uh, some uh, uh, seriously uh, trending, not an open source uh, database uh, for the change. So, but what exactly is the cloud impact to the open source uh, projects? Well, I think that is quite uh, interesting because on one extent, it really uh, uh, max helps to maximize and simplify uh, adoption. Because when you do some cloud uh, vendor 
shrink wrap some open source projects, make it uh, accessible, right? To, you know, deployed in one uh, uh, click, right? Then that makes it easy for many. But at the same time, that also significantly changes who now gets the money for that open source project, <laughs> right? Uh, of course, uh, uh, what also means in this case that maybe that cloud vendor and not the open source project uh, uh, maintainers, they get a, uh, get a bulk uh, of uh, the money. I think this one of a maximize and simplify adoption was especially important uh, valued in the PostgreSQL uh, space in case of databases. Because if you think about, let's say, a decade ago, the, po the PostgreSQL often was a uh, fantastic technology which was uh, loved by a lot of developers, right? Because it has a lot of fantastic SQL uh, uh, features. But that also was kind of database for smart people, right? It was not easy to really install and operate, especially high viability, replication, and so on and so forth. And then what? And then Heroku came in, and then uh, you know uh, Amazon and other cloud vendors, which can say, hey, you know what? You are, we actually take that away from you. All that kind of PostgreSQL high ability, backup, configuration, yada, yada, yada. You as developer do not need to do that. Well, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, really helps to uh, make it uh, uh, make it very uh, very popular, and I also think this kind of impact uh, uh, also had uh, my uh, PostgreSQL community focus a lot more on uh, uh, usability over uh, last uh, decade or so, uh, right? Uh, uh, which makes it uh, made it easier even for people who are not running PostgreSQL uh, in the cloud. Uh, it's uh, easier to run. But uh, going back to the open source and the business around open source, uh, this is uh, Martin Mikas, who was a CEO of uh, MySQL, AB, right, when I uh, uh, worked there. And he used to say a lot, what, hey, guys, remember what open source is not a business model. Right, the most of them, uh, open source is a development model. You can think about open source as a deployment model, right? Maybe even as a marketing model, right? But you can actually have many kinds of uh, business models, which is supported by the open source development model. One of such uh, uh, such model uh, were, uh, in the past uh, was uh, dual licensing which was used by uh, a lot of uh, well, some companies, right? Which say, hey, you know what? If you are just using our software in the open source ecosystem, you can use it for free. If you are embedding that in a commercial licensed software, well, we want some money from you too, right? Like that's, for example, how MySQL operate. But guess what? That is not uh, what uh, works uh, the, in the cloud. <laughs> Uh, right, if you open source uh, licenses, as we've seen, well, if you shrink wrap that uh, open source, well, uh, that doesn't uh, typically trigger GPL uh, uh, provision, right? And you can, uh, well, essentially monetize open source uh, without, uh, well, uh, having to uh, pay developers, right? And that, of course, pushes the people to have a comp uh, approach for uh, monetization. That brings us what uh, those days, I think when you look at open source, it is very helpful to look at uh, two different kinds of uh, uh, open source. Right? There is this uh, sort of like a foundation and other non-profit community uh, driven open source, uh, like uh, Postgres on the other side, and then you can have a uh, a single vendor, right, or, or, or like a, a company-owned open source on other side. And if you think about the cloud, their reaction in this case is, uh, is quite uh, different um, as, I, uh, uh, as I see that. Now, on one side, if you look at the foundation-based open source, well, and I think uh, Postgres is a great example in the database space, uh, 
The focus here happens as well. Cloud is fantastic. It helps us to accelerate adoption, get more users, and so on and so forth. And in fact, what now it changes, who makes uh, uh, the most money, well, doesn't really matter. Right? Like, like you can see in PostgreSQL space, for many years, Enterprise DB was a big dog. Now, uh, you can see what uh, companies like uh, uh, Amazon uh, and uh, you know, Microsoft cloud companies are hiring a lot of PostgreSQL engineers, right, and otherwise financially supporting that uh, community a lot, right? From, Pro from PostgreSQL community, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter too much because if you look at the overall ecosystem, uh, is uh, financially healthy. From a single vendor standpoint, of course, that is a different story, right? In this case, well, uh, if you are that uh, vendor, which typically becomes some either venture funded or in a number of cases, even uh, uh, public uh, companies, they are uh, not enjoying that kind of uh, competition with, uh, uh, with the cloud vendors. And in many cases, uh, for, for those businesses, their uh, open source is typically something which is convenient marketing strategy, especially in the, old, uh, in the early days uh, of a company, right? And if uh, uh, that has to be tossed for uh, you know, maximizing uh, returns, then that is what uh, uh, happens. And that is what we see with a number of companies those days in the last f uh, few years, fully ab or partly abandoning the uh, open source uh, licenses, right? And I think what is also interesting in this case is uh, uh, how it is done, right, which is kind of, uh, well, uh, in my opinion, not very directly saying, hey, folks, you know what? We understand open source is great, but we need to make money, so we change that, right? Like Redis, for example, they uh, try to add their commons clause, you know, to Apache license, right, and uh, uh, put that as a kind of like a good thing, which uh, makes it better for everyone. There, that would be probably better called like a slavery clause, right, not a commons clause. Well, anyway, they uh, <laughs> abandoned that, uh, uh, that effort. Right or elastic, right? I also like what they called it. Right? Let's say, hey guys, we are doubling down on open. We want elastic to be more open, so we're changing our license to property license. Right? Well, and you can think in this case, attempt to uh, play with a word, saying, well, maybe we'll confuse our customers and we'll tell them now what they are open, they are open, and then think what the open is the same thing as open source. Right? Well, and especially because, you know, we had like an open standards, right, for example, uh, for a long time, which were typically implemented by very much uh, proprietary mm, software. Now, what is, is uh, with that is a goal of that uh, license uh, change? Well, that is a pretty much creating monopoly on the database as a service market for databases or generally as a service uh, for uh, in uh, this uh, ecosystem in many cases. And now why does database as a service really matter, right? Why would we care, right? Shouldn't we just say, hey, you know what? Screw database as a service, we'll just, you know, manually deploy the stuff on whatever way we can. Well, because the database as a service, that's really what provides state-of-art uh, simplicity. It allows to provide that high-level um, uh, automation and it really uh, maximizes developers' focus on uh, application versus database, right? And that is something which they and you know, their companies often want them to, to focus on, how you can build uh, the better apps and uh, ship them faster is uh, often the focus, not like, well, how you are spending your time keeping the, uh, keeping the database uh, uh, happy, right? And what that uh, comes uh, us to, uh, uh, in this case, so what is a problem? In this case, is a uh, monopoly of database service. Well, because that really comes us to uh, the same place we have we have been with a uh, open source uh, with a proprietary software, right? Not really 
any different. If the uh, only way which is usable for you is actually come from proprietary software, well, uh, then uh, uh, that is not really much different from proprietary software. Now, what I think interesting uh, in this case, what we can see as an interesting side effect, what in uh, uh, US, uh, at least, right, you often have sort of like uh, change is what, uh, what it means to have experience to be expert in a database. You can well find somebody writing in, in resume, right, yes, you know, I have many years experience with Postgres as a DBA. But what that means is uh, experience clicking buttons in AWS, right, to Google interface, not really understanding uh, details how PostgreSQL works, right, to being able to really uh, administer that, uh, uh, that standalone Postgres, right? And that kind of goes even more to this sort of uh, aspect of their uh, vendor locking. So uh, remember, the proprietary clouds, of course, bring us a great usability, great simplicity uh, in this case. But if you go up to those uh, proprietary, uh, let's say, uh, very cloud-specific uh, extension, that also comes at a great cost, both in terms of uh, uh, you know money, but also in uh, terms of uh, uh, loss of, uh, of of flexibility. Because, of course, if you have uh, deeply adopted some proprietary solution, it's very tricky to, you know, to make a change. Though, I would say what not all is lost in uh, this regard, and we have uh, some, uh, uh, I think, in, uh, find ourselves in a rather interesting uh, situation uh, those days. Now, uh, I wonder, uh, how many of you have been involved in the open source since maybe, you know, late 90s, early 2000s? Anyone? Okay. A few, uh, few hands. So, at that point, I uh, remember, we had a lot of folks which uh, would be using some very, you know, polished, productive, development platform based, for example, about Microsoft Windows, you know, .NET, ASP, all this kind of stuff, right? You know, nice graphical user interface, you know, you have all the, uh, all the kind of uh, bells and whistles, right? And if you were on the open source side, you would be writing, you know, PHP or Perl in VI, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that is dumb, uh, you know, stone age. Uh, right, uh, in this case. But, uh, but guess what, right? Obviously, over, uh, uh, over time, the open source tools uh, have uh, deployed, right? And now we have, you know, fantastic development tool, tool chain supporting the open source uh, uh, programming languages, right? And we can find, I think, ourselves in a similar situation right now where if you go to IWS, platform, right, or Google, wherever, right, you have a lot of very polished, integrated services, right, there in cloud-based open source, where it's kind of a little bit more of uh, Wild West. Another example uh, I would provide is uh, Solaris and Linux. I remember, and it's the same time, probably early uh, 2000s, late 90s, uh, running Linux while I have some, you know, elder friends who were working in the banks and something, you know, running real operating systems, Solaris, AX, HPUX, right? And I say, what? Linux? You must be joking. That is like a 32-bit operating system. You know, it doesn't even have like a good SMP support, which it didn't, right? <laughs> uh, uh, at the time, right? And well, it doesn't even support files more than two gigabytes in size, right? It's like, what? How can you deal with that, right? I mean, some of you, uh, uh, like, if you look at the MySQL folks, right, some may remember there was some support for something called merge tables, 
right, in the early days, right? Uh, well, and the reason for that was exactly this, right? Because if you needed to actually, uh, in my sum tables, right, uh, you basically have all the data stored in one file, and if you need more than uh, two gigabytes in size, you would need to chop your data on Linux, right, uh, and use merge tables, right, and that's uh, in, in the early days. But anyway, now, probably very few of you are still running Solaris, uh, uh, right, uh, and uh, Linux is uh, absolutely uh, dominating in this space. And I think that is what we are going to see with their uh, uh, with their AWS and the cloud uh, ecosystem as well, where additionally to their uh, AWS and other proprietary clouds, we are having solutions from a cloud native uh, of, uh, foundation, right, which is now building a lot of building blocks for, uh, you know, pretty much uh, uh, everything. And to even maybe make it uh, simpler, uh, I have uh, zoomed in kind of this landscape uh, picture we provide. And you can see there is huge amount of projects, companies, and so on, right, which are building solutions based on this cloud-native, Kubernetes-based landscape. Frankly, often it is even too many, right? You'll find that there is many solutions for a single problem in many cases, and that reminds me uh, Linux, right, where you often uh, also would see a lot of kind of solutions for the the same problem exists, right, and then they are kind of gradually some die off, some consolidate, right, and we get kind of uh, the most widely adopted solution, right. That is uh, quite normal, right. I think that's sort of permissionless innovation, right, when a lot of people trying to do something independently is really their open source way uh, to do things. Now, that doesn't mean what I am uh, uh, really against the cloud. I think uh, cloud uh, is very wonderfully convenient if you uh, use it uh, right. And in my opinion, uh, that uh, right is uh, treating that as a commodity infrastructure provider. Now, what is interesting in this case is this slide is not something I came uh, about. That is something actually coming on from the uh, AWS uh, presentation, right, or maybe, you know, 10 years ago, right, or more when they still had to explain to people what cloud is. And they, of course, compared cloud to electricity, saying, hey, you know what, we just use utility electricity. We're not all running our own generators, right? We can maybe do that in exceptional cases. But typically, utility power is, uh, uh, is better, right? But what I think is important about utility power, though, is what that is a commodity, right? Whatever provider of a power you get, uh, right, it is your, I know, let's say TV will still work, right? Well, that is not really uh, how modern clouds operate, right? We try to push you to this kind of a higher value proposition, which also only works if you buy electricity from, from them, right? That is not a very good uh, situation to, uh, to be in. I started in this presentation to talking about the database as a service, though. And uh, you may wonder where we have uh, their database as a service implementation uh, in an open source at this uh, point. And the answer here is, well, uh, really uh, not yet, right? If you want to say, hey, is there is a GA full-blown database as a service here which I can stand up, which is completely open source, well, I'm not aware you know, of one. But I think there are uh, some uh, interesting developments which show what we are uh, going there. On one extent, it is uh, Kubernetes, right? I mentioned, already mentioned Kubernetes as a foundation for that cloud native uh, landscape. But what is important about the Kubernetes uh, uh, is uh, it, you can think about that as something similar to Linux as an operating system, right, but which works uh, on uh, their uh, data center level, right, with months of hosts, not on a single host, uh, uh, single host level. And what is uh, uh, great is what Kubernetes has became 
universally available. It runs in any public cloud, your you know, private cloud providers, uh, right? You know, folks like uh, VMware, Red Hat, right? They all have uh, the Kubernetes support. It also is uh, available on the edge, right? If you, uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, if you want it out there. What is interesting in this case, right, it became kind of so ubiquitous and so demanded, even Amazon, who initially built their own like containing, uh, container or orchestration servers, uh, later had to deploy the managed Kubernetes uh, uh, solution, right, due to demand. Initially, Kubernetes was uh, built for stateless application, but uh, now initially in, uh, increasingly, it has support for stateful uh, applications like uh, databases. And to the point that Kubernetes operators now exist for most popular open source uh, uh, databases. Now, I mentioned a keyword here, the operators, right? So what is important about their operators and what those words are? The operators is uh, this kind of software you can deploy on, uh, uh, on uh, Kubernetes, which helps you with not only day one, but also day two uh, automation. Right? Now, what uh, I was speaking about, about day one and day two automation. Day one is basically, hey, you know what? I can deploy it. Right? Deploy it, so, you know, maybe set up my you know, highly available cluster, yada, yada, right? Now, uh, it is uh, wonderful, right? The thing about the databases, though, many of them have to live for a long time. You start your database, it has you know, some data, and that data is constantly kind of modified, queried, and so on and so forth, right? And it typically needs to be in that state, constantly working for years, if not uh, decades. And that means that there is much more time and effort is uh, spend in that kind of day two, when you have to scale your database, back up your database, upgrade your database, right, and so on and so forth, right, and all while keeping the data preserved. It's not like uh, an application, right, there's a stateless application, hey, you know what, if something goes wrong, right, you can always just, you know, uh, recreate it from, uh, from scratch, right, and you can, uh, you know, literally make all your deployments like as a, you know, day one deployments. Right? Well, that doesn't quite work with a database, right? If you have every deployment just provision uh, empty database, well, that probably would not be very helpful uh, to, um, uh, to your business. The thing with uh, Kubernetes operator, though, they rely on UX, which is uh, uh, different from, uh, let's say, RDS, right, or, uh, or, or similar uh, solution, right? So it requires the uh, Kubernetes expertise. No, I don't have five minutes left. I have 15 minutes left. No? Five, five minutes for the talk and five more for questions. Okay, okay. Well, uh, anyway, Masha told me I have until 11 o'clock, so anyway. But uh, he just uh, tells me to speak faster, damn it. Okay, I will speak faster. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, what we can, uh, uh, I would uh, also note here, if you want to check out their uh, Kubernetes, uh, there is, uh, uh, well, what you can do with Kubernetes operator, I put uh, some uh, article here. Okay, so the question with the Kubernetes in, the, in this case uh, would be, uh, can we build database as a service using Kubernetes as a backend, and I want to say that it's not only something which uh, is uh, possible, but that is uh, also something has been uh, uh, has been done. You can see many modern databases as a service are actually built using uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, as a as a backend. Some of you will tell you that uh, plainly. Some of you will say, eh, you know what, uh, that is not your business. What have you run our kitchen? But there is uh, actually Kubernetes uh, in the back. What we are doing with, uh, 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 at Kircona is what we are uh, building a database uh, as a service, a functionality as a feature of uh, 
through Kona monitoring and, uh, uh, and management, which is currently in uh, preview, like uh, in uh, better, uh, if you like, right? And uh, uh, that is what we are doing. I also know that there is a number of other teams are working in some uh, similar things because that idea about, hey, you know what, we need to simplify adoption of a databases and operators work for many, but not for everyone is seen uh, by many. So, you know, here is a little uh, 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 screenshot. And I would encourage you, if that's something you care about, uh, you know, consider uh, getting, uh, uh, getting involved. Okay. Uh, here is also something which uh, you may uh, like. Uh, uh, if you want to play with uh, Kubernetes, where that is in uh, our you know, database service functionality, or you want just to check out with uh, our operators, we partner with a company called Siva to provide their uh, free Kubernetes uh, uh, solution right, for testing, uh, testing purposes. So uh, check it out. The other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about is something which uh, we at uh, Pircorn have been working on the last, uh, uh, you know, a few years uh, now, right, which is uh, uh, the uh, Pircorna, uh, Pircorna platform. And if you look at Pircorna platform, that is something for which is our uh, solution, which is includes our software, uh, and uh, services, right, which really uh, help you to uh, run the open source database. We support MySQL, MongoDB, Postgres, the, the best uh, we can. What I think is important uh, uh, here, uh, and how I think it's very uh, different from many other offerings on the market, is what we are, uh, have uh, all our uh, software, including core database and tools, uh, as, an, uh, as an open source, uh, still, right, while uh, enhance that with a uh, number of uh, uh, other things like access to the experts, self-service content, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, that is, if you think how a Pircona platform uh, is architected uh, on, the, on the component level. Right, you can see what we have our uh, databases, right, which we can run either on your uh, Linux bare metal OVM or, uh, or Kubernetes, right? All of that can run, you know, pretty much where you want, right? Ranging from a cloud and on, uh, on-prem. And uh, uh, we have a tool of uh, Percona monitoring management, right? In the center of that is providing that a single uh, pane of glass, uh, providing the monitoring, remediation services, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, like here is uh, also uh, things I wanted to uh, end about. One is maybe show you this slide uh, we created about the uh, history of uh, Pircona. That is from the last year, 15, uh, 15 years. Now we are uh, now uh, 16. Uh, and uh, and uh, I thought that may be uh, interesting for, for you. Uh, what I also want to emphasize uh, here is what uh, uh, at uh, Pircona we had this pretty unique approach to open source uh, business, right? By having all of our software available as an open source, right? We have been doing for 16 years, right? And we have been, you know, both serving our customers all those years as well as uh, growing uh, as uh, a business. So that is uh, possible. Though, of course, you know what, uh, uh, that maybe does not uh, get you as fast business grow, right? And, you know, uh, public company with a quadrillion billion of dollar valuation, right? As some, uh, you know, bastardized open source uh, uh, approach may, uh, may give. Here's another picture to share with you. This is uh, Pircon, uh, this is Vadim and myself celebrating our 16 years, right, on like all staff call. In this case, and you know what, uh, Vadim uh, wanted me to ask you something here, right? And this is kind of a sensitive question for him, right? He was asking, well, he thinks you look like a gay couple here. <laughs> Does he think so? 
Yeah, okay, yeah. So that's why he probably wants me to not say, Peter, never share this picture with, with uh, anyone. No, no. In fact, we both have our wives, our kids. Uh, so, but well, it looks like as it looks, what you can do. Uh, another thing which you may uh, or may not be uh, aware uh, about is uh, what is like uh, last month uh, I changed my role in uh, Pure Corner, so I'm now founder still, uh, uh, not uh, CEO anymore. And this uh, uh, wonderful woman, uh, Anne Schlemmer, took uh, over as uh, uh, Pure Corner CEO and to continue uh, running the company. I'm still involved, as you can see it uh, here, right, and continue to be involved in Pure Corner, especially now product, community, uh, culture, and stuff, but we'll now have all those, you know, giant administration nightmare left to on instead. <laughs> uh, what I am uh, also doing uh, while uh, doing Pure Corner uh, part-time is uh, uh, I start with um, a uh, little uh, company, which is called uh, uh, Renegade Underdogs, where uh, I will do some sort of uh, advisory, maybe kind of like a, uh, you can think about like some uh, incubator thing, right? Uh, maybe a little investing for open source and uh, open source uh, related businesses. And also that gives me some more time and uh, uh, flexibilities to do some uh, uh, adventures. Some of you know I enjoy in a you know both corporate and non uh, corporate environment. Right here, you can see we uh, took a team of folks to uh, run a, a little uh, Spartan race in Austin, Texas, and what is like 35 degree weather to enjoy some pain and suffering. Uh, right, or uh, go to the uh, mountains. And what is the link here is this, right? Like, I often uh, email to some of my friends, like uh, Alkin here, saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go to the mountains. Do you want to, uh, to join, right? And often I tell that to people too late or something. So I was thinking, well, you know what? I'll probably create a Facebook page, and if somebody wants to know about what Peter is organizing, and welcome people to come, well, uh, that is uh, that is a page, right? So if you uh, l you know uh, like activities, then there is like a 20% chance you die. Then <laughs> uh, join that page. Well, and this is uh, this is joking, right? I'm like uh, uh, very safe. You know, nobody ever was hurt on my activities besides myself, right? I dislocated my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, last thing uh, we did in this uh, space. Well, uh, with that, that is uh, pretty much uh, all I have. Uh, just, you know, a few more, uh, you know, corporate slides. As you probably know, Pircona is awesome, and we have a lot of uh, uh, customers who love us uh, dearly, and also we are uh, always uh, hiring fantastic people. With that, it's all I had to say. And what? And Artyom is going to be kicking off the stage, right? <laughs>